And we're still carrying on with a conversation about women. Yesterday, we marked International Women's Day, and we're talking about equal for equal. That's the hashtag that we run with after 25 years after that Beijing conference. We're saying that we still want more uh, female participation in all spheres of life. And so the theme for this year is I am generation equality. Now, there's a major challenge when it comes to women taking up roles in you know various sectors um, you know, in the economy and Today says that women make up 43.1% of economically active population in Ghana. Majority, unfortunately, working in the informal sector and in food crop farming. And when it comes to the formal sector, uh, it looks like there's still a lot more work to be done. We're talking about tourism and women in tourism and the fact that, unfortunately, women don't have that much uh, representation in that sector as well. What are we getting wrong and what are we getting right? Um, quick one, another statistic that I want to put out there is that in Ghana, about 53.6% of all businesses are owned by males and 46.4 percent by females even though there are more female entrepreneurs we don't do as well as the male entrepreneurs as well so really what can be done to promote women in tourism as well and to help us with this discussion we have ambassador nancy sam she's a president for women in tourism thank you so much for joining us it's good to have you. And Suzanne Manassian is the CEO of Gorgeous International, and she's also the execution coordinator for Women in Tourism. You're both welcome. And happy International yeah. Women's Day. How did you celebrate Thank yesterday? You. Yeah. How did you celebrate yesterday? Yesterday we had a, um, a dinner at the digital, digital center okay. at Circle. Mm. We had over 100 women. The Minister of Gender was there. We had a lot of women CEOs. I see. And it was a time of interaction. Okay. And time of um, trying to see what next, 2020, what are we doing as women? What is our next step? What mm -hmm. is our focus? So there was, um, um, we, we had to do exchange um, program, talking to one another. There was a panel yeah. to discuss the way forward. So it was a wonderful time, and then after that we had a we had dinner. Okay, yeah. I'm sure you enjoyed it. So were you yes, there as it well? Was, it was awesome. Yes, it was. Yeah. What were some of the challenges that these women raised in terms of building businesses in the tourism sector? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the major challenge was um, women from the word good childhood. Uh, we are not trained to be. Um, to be very confident when it comes to the gender equality. Yeah. We seem to place the boy child in a certain role in the house. Mm -hmm. So we happen to grow up with it, believing that, no, this one is for men. This one is for women. Mm -hmm. But we are supposed to, as mothers, let them know that they are human beings and they both can do equally. Yeah. And so we shouldn't give any limitation to the woman. That was one the ch the girl child. That was one of the major things that we really stressed on yesterday. Okay. And I believe that if that is really clear, the girl child, the woman, can go as high as they want. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, we do have more girls in school now. Yeah. And so then the other you know side of the discussion would be that we always used to complain that girls did not have representation. Now even in school we have more girls than boys. And yeah. so really. Have we not empowered them enough to want to even take up roles, um, you know, in the various sectors after school? So why are we still pushing the agenda yeah. um, for think, women? I think it still depends on the parents mm. and how you, you, you groom your children in terms of letting them understand. Although they are doing it in school, school is a curriculum. Okay. They're being taught. The usual practical of it is also from the house. So the parents having the responsibility to let them understand that a girl child can do just as the same as the guy or the man is that have, having that understanding that you can do just as the same as a guy. So is it not an innate thing that women naturally are calm, laid back? Yes. Why are we forcing then for the woman to be something that she was not necessarily created mm. to be? And that would be the argument as well because boys naturally are aggressive and so then yes. they would go forth and do all the things that they have to do. So if a woman innately is the calm type, then is there really a need to want to force? Because now the boys are also complaining that we seem to be empowering the women even more. And very soon we'll have feeble men mm -hmm. and empowered women. And then we're going to start the whole cycle of trying to empower men again, um, you know, because then they didn't get that love and that empowerment that they needed mm -hmm. when they were growing up. I think we are getting into a generation that we really have to um, 
come one, I mean, be 50-50 to mm -hmm. be able to help one another and see in ourselves that we can do whatever Anything. we can do. You know, because when it comes to this part of our world, um, the women laying on the side, backside, is really, really a, a challenge. Mm -hmm. And even though we have a lot of females going to school, the, that ideology is still there. That mm -hmm. the fact that they are even in school does not really, some of them, give them that capability to realize that, look, I can do what I can. Yeah. And so we still have a long way to, to, go, to go with yeah. the women. Talking about the formal sector, you wanted to touch yes, on I that? Yes, I wanted to okay. just also add a little bit. Just as you said, the women or girls are more than the, the men now, in or schools, even in schools. Yeah. Um, because women are made to be relaxed, as you said, and in its problem, that's why we're still not getting to the 50-50. Okay. Irrespective of how um, you, 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 you're making women to understand. Mm. But still, at least a percentage of women will still get to that understanding that, yes, I still can push more than what I was made to be, to achieve even higher than what a man can achieve. All right. So we're still not getting there, which is going to be a bit difficult because we weren't made probably to be like that. And in Africa as well, we've been taught to probably relax and let mm -hmm. the men take the lead. Yes. So it's going to take a bit of time yeah. to even get to that percentage where it's going to be 50-50. But at least we know so far as we're impacting that, that kind of confidence in them, mm some will still take that lead. Let's talk about workplace discrimination and stereotyping mm -hmm. and all of that for women in the tourism sector as well. Because we do know that more men occupy the top positions and women are made mm -hmm. to occupy, you know, yeah. the other, I wouldn't say non important but you, you get what I mean. Yeah. And so talking about discrimination, how bad is it for women in the tourism industry? Yeah, I try. In Ghana, with my experience, I'm seeing even more women in the hospitality okay yeah. yeah especially when it comes to the waiters housekeeping mm -hmm. and these days i'm even seeing women becoming the general manager ceos yeah. years back it was never never would you ever see a woman going to that top mm. position and so i think that especially in ghana we are really moving very fast okay yeah but mm. apart from that even with the few men that have owned most of the hotels, yeah. um, we believe that, of course, not only the, the, the hospitality, but it's cut across that women still have the challenges whereby they are being discriminated. When you are filling a form and you say, I, you are married, mm -hmm. they are like, oh, she's going to, or I just married. She's going to get pregnant very yeah, soon. Yeah, you can't yeah. count on her. You put her on the side and take another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's um, sometimes you are even called back and say, "Look, the form don't write you are married because you yeah. might not get mm -hmm. the job." Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the things that causes the discrimination because we feel that a woman is a woman. It's a God created thing. You definitely have to produce a baby. Yeah, and so nothing should limit you to get whatever you are supposed to get and accomplish your your, your vision or your destiny yeah. when it comes to job yes yeah, so these are some of the little things that women are still having challenges with, with. Yeah. in terms of payment as well what's what's it like uh, are women paid equally I for the same if, amount of work and all if, that if if the position is equal if there is a there is a, a salary rate you pay everybody mm. so if that person person takes an, a managing director role definitely I believe they might be paid okay. at the same at the same rate. All right. Yes, but just as she mentioned, sometimes some of the processes that a woman has to a woman has to go through. If you're employing them, you look at some of these things mm. and you consider. Okay, I'll prefer to take a guy that there wouldn't be a bit of disruptions and certain duties yeah. than than a, a, a female. But all the same, when they take a male, let's say. MD, there's always an assistance probably of a woman who is going to support in terms of the creativity and in, in, certain, in certain things that they need to do practically. I mean, I'm not surprised. I, recently, I was interacting with a young lady who is mm -hmm. more like, she works with a tourism company, a mm -hmm. travel and tour. And she said she's just three months on the job. And when she took the job, she was warned that you cannot get pregnant in the first year mm -hmm. um, of working with us because yeah. we need someone who's consistent. Mm -hmm. And so even though she wants to start a family, she's stuck. 
She doesn't know yeah. whether to quit the job or go ahead, or go ahead because she doesn't have any choice mm -hmm. at this point. And it's really sad. Yeah. But let's talk about financial institutions and their support for women mm -hmm. as well. Is there any, any support coming in for women? Especially yeah. the entrepreneurs because yeah. there has been complaints. Yes. Um, yes. Just recently, or not too um, long ago, we used to have a lot of savings and loan that sprang up mm -hmm. that were ready to give little loans here and there for women. And um, I don't know what really happened. Either is the payment back or it was the interest mm. that was really causing the issue. Yeah. But with the, after a while, it all cut off. They stopped. They stopped and financing women's yes, businesses? Yes, they stopped. And even if they are doing you have to go through a long a process. process unlike before yes you did you really need somebody to just come and guarantee yeah. but these days the process is really was it not awesome. because maybe these entrepreneurs were defaulting payments yeah and that could have been the reason why yeah, they I put think stringent that the measures in, the interest the okay. interest was so high. high yeah okay because if you can be in europe and america and you pay only seven percent or um, less than three percent five percent and you are in Ghana and you're paying about 35 percent that's too much that is too mm -hmm. much yeah okay and yeah. that was a problem so what what really are you looking at doing to ensure that uh, you know financial support comes for women especially um in their line of business yeah i think um there should be there, there should be a scheme okay maybe from the governmental section mm -hmm whereby they can get a loan that is at a very low interest because I know government debt loans with maybe 1.5%. And so if they give them that 3%, it makes it so easier. And they could pick some few Female. very successful women that they are very mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. that can pay. And then they can start grooming these ones up okay. to be able to be more established. And then they can even employ more women even yeah. under yeah i say that right. currently there really are no financial institutions that focus on just supporting women entrepreneurs yeah. i think there is a few okay there's a few that supports women entrepreneurs and even encourages them to take certain facilities that can push their businesses a bit further okay um what she's saying is she feels there should be more, more to be done more considering the women and putting them in that frame where you know you know what i want to give priority to mm. the women and also when i'm doing that i should be able to help them push the business if they take a facility there should be some form of um, um resource that would also assist them in making the business exorcist why are women not collaborating i mean if <laughs> you're not getting support from the higher institutions mm. there probably are some women who are doing very well in their yeah. line of work and so they should be able to offer support to other women to grow their businesses as well why don't we have that collaborative effort amongst women I think there are, but it's not as much. As yes, much, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, there's not enough. Why? Uh, um, you know, I think it's natural. It is With very women. natural mm. when it comes to women. But we are trying to overcome that. Okay. And we are doing better than before. Okay. Because naturally, it is something that we women are trying to fight and overcome that. Yes. Yeah. Let's, okay. not, let's not say this. some women are trying they're still yeah. trying to give opportunities to other women given the platform because there are women that owns um, 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 finance financial yes. institutions, institutions and, and they're still that. giving yeah. that priority to women okay. to also get some few advantages there are NGOs that employ only women there are entrepreneurs that have only employed women so that they can en empower these women to okay. also do certain things for themselves. Well, my time is up. I wanted to just give women a message quickly before we go. And so I'll start with the ambassador. Yeah, I, my message this morning to all women is that women, the sky is not even our limit. Mm. We can go beyond the sky. And that there's nothing in your capability that you cannot do. You just have to have the faith, believe, take a step. And uh, the other thing I want to say is we must help ourselves. Yeah. When there is women or ladies coming for interview and you think that the woman has the qualification, you in the panel must push for that woman to get a job. Definitely. What about yes, you? Briefly? What I'm going to say is that um, we shouldn't be too, too comfortable in our comfort zones. 
by bringing up just children, not pushing for ourselves. I think we could do better, we could do more by always achieving to the higher heights. Even when we're in a platform where we think men are probably the, the, the um, what should I say, probably there is a man in there who is not allowing you. Always bear in mind that it could only be that, just that man. There are also another man who could give you that opportunity. Let's push ourselves. Let's always attain um, higher heights. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. I've been speaking to Ambassador Nancy uh, Sam, and she's the president for Women in Tourism, and also Suzanne Manassian, and she's the CEO of Gorgeous International, and also the execution coordinator for women in tourism we're still focusing on women and so much later we'll have anita eskin who's just been appointed ambassador for generation equality by unicef ghana and so we'll have an, also another rep from commonwealth also talking about the new agenda for women and making sure that we are equal for equal and so keep watching